Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and I would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're going to learn how mathematics and statistics can assist you in answering the question of how readable is a particular text, and even at which stage of education this text becomes appropriate to your students. And we will use the procedure developed by Coleman and Lau in the 1975 paper to potentially shed some light on the debate of who did develop the best capital asset pricing model. It is a widely known anecdote in finance and in economics research overall that four researchers, namely Sharp, Trainer, Mossen and Littner, developed something resembling a capital asset pricing model independently of each other during the span of four years. And whereas Trainer did come first in his 1962 work, the Sharp's paper in 1964 is the most frequently cited paper and the one most frequently used by academics in explaining the capital asset pricing model. So how does a readability score assist us in resolving this debate? We'll return to that towards the end of our video. However, right now, I'll explain how to derive this measure and how to interpret it. This metric is very easy to calculate because it only is concerned with the number of letters per 100 words in a particular text excerpt and in the number of sentences per 100 words in the same text. And it is quite intuitive that the longer words are in a particular text, the more difficult it is to comprehend, and the longer the sentences are, the more difficult the particular text is to comprehend. And statistically, Coleman and Lau did exactly the same thing. They estimated how these two characteristics contribute to texts being used at various stages of education. And their index is basically the higher the more difficult, but as an additional perk, their index tells you at which year of education this text is appropriate. So, for example, if the index is equal to 12, it means that this text is appropriate for final year high school students. If the index is equal to 13, it means it is appropriate for first year university students. And something uh, in excess of 16 would mean that this text is only feasibly understandable by university graduates, for example, master students or even PhD students and so on. So let's consider how to use Excel string or text functions to retrieve the values of Coleman Leo index for the abstracts of the four Kappen papers I've previously mentioned. So first of all, we can measure the length of this text in symbols by simply using the len function. So we just apply the len function to those four texts I have copied in those four respective cells. And we can see that these abstracts are roughly around uh, 600 to 1,000 symbols, which is quite typical for abstracts. And now we can calculate how many words there are in the text. Basically, we know that the words are separated by spaces, and uh, every single space does contribute to the start of a new word. So we can simply count the number of spaces in these particular strings of text and associate them with the number of words. However, to count how many spaces there are, we have to resort to the substitute function. We can figure out how many uh, symbols there are in this text with respect to the number of symbols in this text where all the spaces have been removed. To do that, we can simply calculate the difference between the len of this particular string and the len of a substitute string where all spaces are converted into blanks. And right now we can see that uh, there are 142 spaces in the Sharp 1962 abstract, which corresponds to 142 words in this abstract, which is quite a good length for an abstract, isn't it? And we can see that this is roughly the average number of words in the abstract, 
with Train and Mossen's abstracts being uh, a lot shorter and Lindner's abstract being quite a bit longer. Now, we need to figure out how many sentences there are in these particular text excerpts. And here, it is quite uh, convenient that academic research and academic um, language does not really use any um, sentence and punctuation apart from full stops. Uh, you rarely see uh, questions being asked with a question mark or exclamation marks in academic research. So here we can simply uh, use the same substitute logic and instead of spaces, we need to substitute full stops with blanks and see how many sentences there are. Uh, obviously, if you are considering uh, calculating the Coleman Lao index for non-academic uh, pieces, for non-academic texts, you could use something along the lines of um, subtracting the length of um, substitute with uh, exclamation marks and question marks as well. And to do that, we can simply do this process twice again. And here, input the exclamation mark, and here, input a question mark. And as we subtract three substitute uh, lengths, we can here reflect that by multiplying the initial length by three. And here we see that this doesn't make a difference because, again, uh, very few exclamation marks and question marks in abstracts in particular. But for a generality, this is a good thing to keep in mind. And now, uh, the final uh, step we need to undertake to calculate the Coleman Lao index is to figure out how many letter symbols there are in those abstracts. And we already know that some of the symbols that we have counted here are spaces or full stops or um, sentence and punctuation. Uh, but we also encounter commas and hyphens quite frequently in academic research. So let's count commas and hyphens and then calculate the number of letters by subtracting all of those non-letter symbols from our total number of symbols to get the number of letters. And this is important because the Coleman Lao index dwells on the number of letters per 100 words and not the number of any symbols per 100 words. So let's simply count the number of commas. So here, instead of a space, we'll have a comma. And here, instead of a comma, we'll input a hyphen. Obviously, uh, if there are numbers or numerical symbols uh, in your text, you could also search for that, or you could search for any other non-letter symbols to be even more sure. But as these are abstracts, this is quite enough of due diligence before we calculate the index. And we can see that there are plenty of hyphens in the Lindner abstract, and no hyphens in Trainer abstract, and plenty of commas in all of the abstracts. So now we can finally calculate the number of letters which is the number of symbols minus the sum of all non-letter symbols we have identified. And now we can calculate the L and S um, values that go into the index calculations. So here we need to calculate the number of letters, which is the number we have just calculated per 100 words. It means that we have to uh, divide the number of letters by the number of words and multiply by 100. And we can do that for all um, four abstracts, and we can see that these are uh, roughly similar across all four abstracts. And we can also calculate the number of sentences per 100 words by using the following procedure. We can uh, get the number of sentences, then uh, divide it by the number of words, and then multiply by 100. And we'll get our values over here. And again, uh, we can then accommodate for both of these factors, uh, that is, the longer uh, the words, the harder the text, and the longer the sentences, the harder the text, by calculating this synthetic index here. So we multiply 0 0.0588 by the L value, then we subtract 0 0.296 times the S value, and then we subtract a constant of 15.8. And we can see that the uh, Coleman Lao index of Sharp 1964 abstract is 16.78, meaning that this particular paper is um, ultimately um, appropriate only for uh, fourth year undergraduates or master students, as this value is quite high. And we can calculate it for other three papers and see that the values uh, of the Coleman Lao index for those three are quite close and all are roughly in 12, 13 territory meaning that even a first-year undergraduate would understand those papers. And this uncovers the 
uh, one of the reasons, potentially, for why Sharp 1964 has become the most popular. This paper is more technical and more challenging to understand, meaning that academics got more excited with this paper rather than with the simpler written papers by Trader Mawson and Lindner. And also, given the fact that uh, investment management courses uh, where Sharp's paper and Kappa concept is being investigated, is generally being investigated towards the end of the undergraduate uh, program. So this is something more appropriate, more challenging to read that can intellectually stimulate students for the final year. However, all those four papers do a very good job at explaining the Kappam uh, framework and the concept. So if you are trying to explain a Kappam concept to someone who is just entered university, then use the trainer paper, which is a much simpler to understand. And that's all there is for the Coleman Lao Index, how to calculate it using uh, Excel functions and how to assess text readability using this function, and how to apply it to solve some long-standing puzzles in uh, financial research. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos on business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.